Uh, I'm Vinay Jaju. I'm with Switch On Foundation. It's a uh, it's a not for profit based out of Kolkata. We've been working on the issue of air pollution for about three four years now. We started what was Kolkata Clean Air, and then uh, we expanded that network to Bengal Clean Air. We work uh, on many issues on sustainability, from sustainable agriculture to uh, clean energy access to uh, uh, sustainable mobility. So, uh, really happy to be part of this. Uh, now, air pollution. What I'd like to know from all of you is, if in your chat box, if you can, uh, uh, if you can go to your chat box and uh, tell me. Uh, what you would like to know from this uh, session, um, from this meeting that we have, from this workshop. So, what are your expectations? So, just in short, if you can all do that. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Just just go to the chat box, please, and put. Sir, I want to actually ask something. Put it on the chat box, please, because if everyone starts talking, it become a little bit of an issue. It'd be best if you can. Sir, actually, I have opted for climate change, but no option is there. No, so if you if you want to be in climate change, then stay in the main room. Don't don't join a uh, meeting. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. If anyone wants to stay with the climate change, uh, if anyone, but whoever's been assigned to this room, please stay on this room. Uh, sir, uh, how can we go to main room now? I think you will have to go to more. I am not sure if you would be able to do it now. If you can see that option, then you you can do that. If not, then you'd have to stay put uh, here. uh so yes now i'm going to ask everyone to just go to the chat box and uh, write down what what you are going what you are looking to uh, learn from this session so i'll give you a couple of minutes i'll pause and i will let you put all right great so i've got some chats here uh, problems related to air pollution and its solutions is what people like would like to know uh, harm that air pollution causes solutions so perfect so i think i i would i would be able to cover most of this uh, also some people have written that they would want to see sustainable ideas solutions methods of solving the air pollution problems i'm very happy that many of you many of you want to uh, know the solutions to air pollution which i would definitely love to cover so uh, not wasting any more time i'm going to jump straight into the presentation we have about an hour uh so one i want to just talk about air pollution a lot of us i mean i got introduced to air pollution uh, uh very uh, recently in, in the last 3 4 years and the kind of impact it has uh one thing that really struck me was this lancin commission report that came out in 2015 uh, many of you are now uh, have heard about the lancin commission because of covid mostly because there are there is just so many um uh they they there are medical sort of a powerhouse uh, uh on medical research on medicine research and uh, what they came what uh, report that they came out in 2015 talked about how um, how this uh is the air pollution is killing 13 people every minute uh, and uh, what really struck me more than this was that air pollution kills more people than malaria tuberculosis and aids put together so if you put together all the deaths that are attributable to malaria tuberculosis and aid air pollution kills three times more people every year uh, now that really shook me i was like wow we do so much about malaria so much promotion so much a solution so much awareness building for each of these things uh, and we hardly do anything about air pollution whereas air pollution kills three more three times more people than all of this put together and that's when we uh, wanted to we got together to start some initiatives and actions around it so i'd also like to talk about a few more things uh, around bengal and the air air quality in bengal but it's not just limited to bengal it's also uh, it's also to for other states Uh, so in bengal there are 36 cities uh, that have uh, their air pollution levels are higher than standard um, life expectancy drops by 6 years just because of air pollution 70% of kolkata citizens suffer from respiratory disorders and anyone would know uh, anyone can guess that air pollution impacts our respiration our health our lung health more than anything else and uh, 
40 percent of air pollution deaths are actually happening in the Indo-Gangetic Belt, uh, Bengal, UP, Maharashtra, parts of Jharkhand, uh, and this is where we have to be extremely careful about uh, what we do. Also, some of this we I've already covered, uh, and who are most at risk of air pollution are children, are the elderly, people on the streets uh, who are who are having to who who are sort of unprivileged communities uh, or uh, people with uh, less resources as others, but children, elderly, uh, the poor are at most at risk. And if we talk about children, every three minutes there's a child who's dying because of air pollution in in the country. Um, this is from the global burden of diseases in 2017. Now, also, it's not just the health impact of air pollution, but also climate change and air pollution are very, very closely linked. So the, the problems that are causing air pollution are also the same problems that are causing climate change. Uh, so if we see uh, rainfall patterns changing uh, or weather events happening, extreme weather events happening, or CO2 getting uh, going to the atmosphere, CO2 increase in sea levels, all of these are climate, we've heard about all of this in climate change, but these are exactly the same problems that are there because of, uh, because of air pollution. Uh, it's the, the sources are the same. And I'm gonna briefly, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start talking about the sources of air pollution. And I will be talk, I will start talking about the solutions of air pollution in a minute. But I would like to pause here for a second and ask, uh, I hope everyone is comfortable, has understood what the problems of air pollution uh, are uh, and the problems it can have. So air pollution, what really happens is when we breathe polluted air and this pollutant, some of these pollutants you can see from your naked eyes, but most air pollutants, they're called PM 2.5 or PM 10. They're so minuscule. You can't, there is no chance for you to see it and you breathe them, they go into your lungs and through your lungs, it enters your, uh, it enters the uh, blood stream of your body. And through the blood, these pollutants go and start affecting all your organs. Uh, you can imagine blood sort of flows, flows through all the organs of the body. And all of these organs get disrupted because of uh, the air that we are breathing. Now, uh, and this is where uh, organ failures happen. This is where deaths happen. This is where problems happen. Uh, and it's it's something to be it's something to be very careful about, serious about. It's a slow. It's a very slow problem, right? You. It's not that you breathe something and you get affected by a virus. It's not a virus. With viral, it's anything which is viral. You breathe it or you it enters your body and it immediately causes fever. It immediately causes an issue. With air pollution, it's not that way. It it's builds up over a time. So you continuously breathe polluted air, your organs in the body start getting impacted over a period of time, and uh, which is something to be very, very careful about, something to be very concerned about. Uh, now, what are the sources of air pollution? Uh, there are two broad categories of sources of air pollution. One is natural sources. The other is man-made sources. Natural sources can be the wind and the wind uh, carrying these pollutants. Uh, the other uh, can be uh, uh, wildfires when forests fires catch automatically if they're not managed properly. Uh, volcanoes, of course, can have an impact on. So these are natural sources. We have little that we can do. I'm not saying we can't do anything about it. Like wildfires, if we manage and maintain our forests well, we can we can we can save wildfires, but uh, mostly natural sources we have little control over. What we have control over, I'd like to talk about that. Are man-made man sources, and within man-made sources, man-made sources maybe two types of pollutants. Dekhenge, outdoor pollution and indoor pollution. So within man-made sources, there is outdoor pollution and indoor pollution. Now, outdoor pollution. Just to give you some example, outdoor pollution would be your uh, vehicles would be your industries would be um, uh, the way we are able our agriculture practices all of those are outdoor pollution indoor pollution is what we do in house so uh, a lot of houses still cook their meals in chulhas in with using biomass uh, that is a source of indoor pollution uh, that's a very big source of indoor pollution actually agarbattis 
putting agarbattis or coils in the house these are all sources of indoor air pollution now uh, now to broadly categorize man made sources into three types one is mobile sources second is stationary sources and third is area related sources so mobile sources as the name suggests are sources from where these vehicles the people that are the the pollutants which are moving which are mobile it's mostly vehicles uh, from vehicles you're talking about cars buses trucks uh, planes uh, it could be trains or anything which is mobile which is moving and to for things to keep moving you need a fuel to burn it the fuel could be in the form of petrol diesel it could be in the form of uh, also coal burning when you're when you're when you're running electric vehicles also it's getting powered by uh, electricity and that electricity in most cases is coming from coal so these are all sources of mobile sources of air pollution now stationary sources as the name suggests are sources from where uh, like power plants or oil refineries or industries factories कारखाना जिसका हम जिसको हम कारखाना बोलेंगे और उसका हमको ना एयर पोल्यूशन चिमनी से यूजुअली दिखेगा आपको चिमनी से देर इज पोल्यूशन गोइंग ऑन बिकॉज यू आर अगेन टू रन एनी ऑफ दीज इंडस्ट्री यू नीड अ फ्यूल एंड टू टू रन दिस यू हैव टू बर्न द फ्यूल एंड वन यू बर्न द फ्यूल एंड द फ्यूल कुड अगेन बी बायोमास इट कुड बी कोल इट कुड बी मल्टीपल वेज इन विच कोल कैन हैपन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कैन बी प्रोड्यूस्ड और हीट कैन बी जनरेटेड so to run an industry you either need heat or you need electricity and for all of this you are burning something which is which is causing pollution and that pollution of course is air pollution and what is interesting is that air pollution is not always just uh, is not just always about um uh, putting where the air pollution is staying it's not just there it actually gets transferred so when you see there is a note at the bottom of the slide human generated or natural sources of air pollution actually gets transported from one place to the other they get transported because of air so say i am living in kolkata and about 50 kilometers away from kolkata there is a big industry there is a coal plant or there is an whatever and if the wind the wind patterns change of course from season to season but if the wind is moving from that direction of the air pollution to where the industry is to kolkata then it carries these pollutants and these pollutants also come and in into our city so while of course we have to be very careful about our city or town or village that we live in uh, we also have to be mindful that we are also getting impacted by the pollutants pollution that is happening around the city uh, so that those are two sources of air pollution which are man made mobile and stationary then of course there are area sources and by area sources i'm talking about agriculture mostly or burning of coal or wood uh, uh or for cooking uh, so these are area centric air pollution sources now uh when we talk about uh, air pollution which is area centric i am mostly talking about when i talk about agriculture it's agricultural based air pollution it's not necessarily so agriculture could you could be burning and some of you might have read that some farmers have to burn their crops uh, uh, for their field to for their field or for quickly getting rid of their uh, crop material which is left after they've harvested their food so that could be one but also the way we use land when we cut forests and create agriculture fields out of it and start putting pol uh, polluting pesticides and uh, all of that there is a lot of pollution that is generated which goes into the air and remember what i said earlier pollution is both something that you can see from your eyes and something that you will not be able to see from your eyes so there is a lot of pollution pollutants that we are actually not able to see from our eyes now i'm going to go into each source now i'm going to go straight jump into straight into solutions now uh, what are the solutions and i would particularly like to talk about solution for that you and i uh, as as children as youth as young professionals as parents um, as uh, elderly we can take up in our day to day lives and what is amazing about air pollution is that you can immediately change a habit or 
use or change uh, a certain practice uh, and you're able to immediately bring an impact in your day to day lives into your cities into your towns uh, and and that is the beautiful that's the beautiful thing about air pollution with climate change it's hard to sort of put that um, you know you you've created some pollution uh, it's of course causing air pollution but it's also you're also releasing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere which is causing air pollution which is causing climate change but you're not able to relate what is the impact with with air pollution you're immediately able to start seeing the impact and start seeing the problem that is happening now uh, i'm going going to talk about first is burning of fossil fuels in mining operations so one of the big contributors of climate change and also air pollution uh, is burning of fossil fuels we all know what fossil fuels are they are uh, uh, there's stuff that is in the ground that we dig out it could be coal it could be oil and we burn that for creating energy and uh, also mining operations because what we do is we cut these mines open uh, and there's a lot of dust and a lot of air pollution that goes out which causes air pollution so what are the sources this is the source burning of fossil fuel in mining solution now what are the solution now if we want to see less and less of fossil fuel being burnt it only means that we have to change our habits of consumption of using energy sources and that's the only way we can cut down on fossil fuel so the first thing i would say is conserve energy if we don't need energy don't use it so it's a common habit for us to keep our lights on keep our fans on um uh, when we leave a room or we have more or we have air conditioners when we don't need them or we need or we have uh, uh, more lights than we need we don't have enough ventilation we don't have enough uh, outdoor lighting so all of that becomes very important so conserving energy is very very important and a great way to conserve energy is of course to switch off when you don't need it but also by using energy efficient devices now you will see there are bee standards so bureau of energy efficiency standards on all of these appliances so there is a five star rating system the higher the stars the more uh, you can save on energy and electricity use now uh, uh so what you are going to do with this is when you are going to buy any energy system you have to go and uh, you you will have to go and pick the pick the right one pick which are which have more energy stars ideally five stars and that what that means is it's more energy efficient it is consuming less energy to do the work it requires to do and that obviously means you're able to uh, you're able to save on the burning of fossil fuel also like i said air conditioner is a big guzzler of uh, energy so choose fans over air conditioner as much as possible in my day to day lives I, when there is a hot day uh, i would want to switch on when i'm trying to sleep when i go into sleep i would switch on the air conditioner for half an hour and i would switch it off um, after half an hour or one hour when my room is cool i would let the fans run uh, i would uh, maybe open up the windows uh, later in the night or at that time for some fresh air and uh, that's what i would do at my day to day house uh, day to day life um, so the other thing very important thing is which is to shift to clean energy so we know what clean energy is there is solar there is wind and these are clean energy sources uh, which you can all use in your day to day lives you can put up these a solar panel on your rooftop but also encourage other industries businesses governments to start shifting to clean energy uh, so i have spoken about fossil fuel now i'm going to talk about waste waste is a very very large uh source of generating um methane or air pollution what happens with waste does i'm going to talk about what happens with waste what i like to believe is what we do today is we dig out earth and minerals and resources from the ground and we create waste out of it uh so just imagine we everyone now has everyone's buying a new phone every day every year Uh, people are buying laptops every year but do we really need to i mean even if it's a little outdated but we we can easily run these phones for 
seven, eight, ten years, and that's what our generations earlier were doing. So all of this material, some of it can be electronic waste, some of it can be biomass waste, some of it can be wet, which is wet waste, or it could be dry waste. It could be plastic. It could be just paper, whatever. And all of these things actually go into our landfills. And in the landfills, when all of this waste is put together, there are a couple of things that happen. One, it starts releasing methane, which is very, very ham- harmful. It is a very, very potent greenhouse gas. And also there is fires that start open at these landfills because of all the waste coming together uh, and all of the methane and all of these chemical reactions and all of these ga- gaseous reactions, the fires automatically start happening in these landfills. And it pollutes the air immediately in our cities because our landfills are right around our cities. So how do we, re- so the, the simple solution to waste is reduce waste. And the first thing that I want to ask you is, and, and question you is, is how do you reduce your waste? The first thing you would do is say no to consumption. Uh, why do we need so much material in the first place? Why do we have to, why can't we just refuse that? No, I do not want a new shirt every year. I have, I have a, I have enough clothes. I don't need to buy clothes every year or every couple of years. I don't need to. Personally, in the last 13 years since I've joined Switch On, I have not bought a single piece of cloth, cloth in, the, in any cloth, clothing material in the last 13 years. And I still have a lot of clothes from what I had bought earlier. There's also gifts that come in. And also I've said, I've started saying no to anyone wanting to give me clothes or any gifts that I try to get. So start saying no to consumption. And and when I talk about consumption, I'm just not talking about uh, clothes, but I'm talking about all kinds of consumption, your electronic consumption, appliances that we are buying on a day-to-day basis, uh, the food that we are ordering. Do we need to order food from outside, which is coming in single-use plastic? Uh, We eat that food. We throw the single-use plastic. Clearly, we can't keep it at home. So everything that we do, every small action that we do is actually creating waste. Anything that we buy is actually creating waste Uh, because at some point or the other, it's going to die out and it's going to become a waste and it's going to sit in our landfills. And it's very, very dangerous for that to happen. But again, you can't say no to everything, right? And this is where the second thing comes in are the three R principle, which all of you may have heard of. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. So when you can't say no to... uh, When you can't say no to buying something, then you would have to reduce that item Uh, or you start reusing them. Uh, Say my phone battery has died out. My phone battery is not working. I don't have to go and buy a new phone. I can just go and reuse the phone, buy a new battery, get it put into the system and, uh, and start using that phone back. If my, if my memory of my laptop is dying out, I put an extra battery. I don't need to buy another laptop. I delete some of the items. I I don't have to do something. My clothes have torn. I reuse it. I stitch it up, reuse it, make it a little fashionable and reuse it. Uh, Recycle. This is the third thing. So when we are uh, finishing at the end of our lifetime of a certain product or utensil or appliance, make sure you're putting it to recycle. You're not just dumping it outside your house or in your bin and it just goes into the landfills. And that's very, very dangerous. So everything in the world is pretty much recyclable. Uh, And uh, you just have to find a recycling recycler because if you just throw it outside, no one, the the Safai Karamcharis are not going to segregate them. They try to segregate it as much as possible, but it's not possible to segregate everything because they're also mixed up. So that is where be in the habit of start recycling from your end, from your house, from your school, from your institution. Uh, One very important thing is the the concept of dry waste and wet waste. So what when we are in our day-to-day lives, what are things that we need? We would need uh, food items. We eat eat food and that is wet waste. All of these food items are actually can be composted. Uh, They can be composted and there can be good manure that can be brought in. And then there is items which we are using on a day-to-day basis. There could be bags, there could be bottles, there could be um, um, appliances, many things uh, that we use. 
So some of them, you can immediately switch to sustainable practices. So one, stop seeing, stop carrying or allowing people to carry plastic bag because plastic bag, you cannot, after a point, cannot reuse. You may be able to reuse your plastic bag for one or two times, three, four times, but it's going to tear after a point. Your plastic bottles, again, you may use your plastic bottle for a couple of times, but you would be, you would have to then uh, throw it away. Uh, so first thing is, these items, look at how you can say no to plastic bags, say no to single use plastics, start carrying cloth bags, start carrying, um, there are many things. So even with pipes, people who you need to use pipes, uh, there are steel pipes that are available. So you can just put one steel pipe in your bag and use it. But again, not everything is there that you can, uh, there is a solution to it. So at some point or the other, you would, you would get exposed to some dry waste, some plastic waste or some electronic waste, which you cannot avoid. And that is when you segregate that. So you don't mix your wet waste and dry waste. You segregate them. The wet waste you put in for composting. Now the governments have also started to compost at their end. But <clears throat> what's going to be really fun is if you can start composting uh, in your house itself, in your school, in your college itself, in your offices. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and there are very simple ways you can start composting that in your in your own premise. Uh, and if you can't do that, of course, you segregate it and you encourage the government to start composting the wet waste. Then there is the dry waste. With dry waste, you will be you will you will put the dry waste away, and that you're going to put away for recycling. So that segregation at the house is very important. If you don't segregate that at house. Uh, you're not going to be able to recycle or compost your organic waste or your dry waste. Uh, you will not be able to compost your organic waste or wet waste, and you will not be able to compost or, or recycle your dry waste. So I've spoken about what you can do with waste. But the first thing and most important thing that I would like to point out and encourage everyone to say is go for a minimalistic lifestyle. Go for something which is very minimalistic. You don't have to consume. And I know so many young people who are just taking the pledge. I am not going to consume unnecessarily. And if I'm consuming something, I have to make sure it's sustainable. Um, I'm using cloth bags. I'm using things that I can reuse things I can, or things that I'm not able to reuse. I'm able to recycle them at least and segregate them and recycle them. And of course we have to eat our food so that I'm able to compost. So these are just some things that you will all have to keep in mind. Uh, moving on, there are agriculture activities, which create a lot of waste. So I'd like to pause here. I'd like all of you to think about uh, what I've just said. And I'll move. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So everyone's here. <clears throat> what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do right now is so there are we've talked about what happens with when we uh, for two of these regions. Right. One, of course, was uh, fossil fuel and the other was the second was, of course, uh, based from waste is the, sec the uh, second one. Now, what is very important is agriculture, as I was saying earlier. Agriculture is a very, very important source for air pollution also. Now, how does that happen? So when you one, when you are, I was also talking about this earlier, when you are when you have a farm, right? Uh, but before the farm, there would would obviously be uh, a forest. So you, when you cut the forest, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, harm that you already create. But also, once you put these agriculture lands, you are what you're also doing is there is you are going to uh, there'll be uh, animal husbandry practices going on. There will be a lot of pesticides and chemicals that we'll be putting in the in into the soil. Uh, this earlier we used to have sustainable organic agriculture, but now it's not the case. And these create a lot of harm to the soil, to the water, but also to the air. So how and what can we do um, in 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 becoming uh, our agriculture activities? The first thing is become a vegan or a vegetarian. Vegan, many of you would know is people who don't even have any like milk um, uh, and anything from an animal uh, 
they would not take so that's a vegan a vegetarian can obviously take milk and meat products but a vegan cannot so of course you would have to talk to your doctor about what would be the most suitable diet for you but non vegetarian if when you're eating uh, an animal or a anything which is from that uh, from the which is a living creature uh, you will not believe the kind of impact that you have on the environment it is a massive impact on the environment so if i were to talk about goats right a goat would be uh, would have to be fed so and uh, over such a large mass and would have to be fed so much food that the impact it has on climate change the impact it has on uh, the air because of feeding the goat is it, humongous is 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 huge as compared to just growing animal uh, as as compared to just growing uh, feed uh, from what we have in the uh, so this is very important the second thing that is really important is choose sustainable organic grown food um uh, we used to have sustainable organic food but as i was mentioning now just to grow more food uh the industrial agriculture practices have left our good agriculture practices of sustainable grown food and this what this is leading to are two things actually one it's leading to air pollution it's leading to greenhouse gas emissions but it is also re- leading to uh, uh our health getting impacted uh the uh so i would definitely encourage all of you to s- start switching to sustainable organic uh, grown food there's another session going on about sustainable organic gr- grown food you will be able to uh, go and see the recording of it later but i'm just going to pause here and not go into more details this is extremely important the third thing uh, buying local and fresh seasonal food now when you don't buy local food say you start buying food which is imported from switzerland or from brazil or from the usa what you're doing is there is a concept called food miles and what that means is the food that is coming from switzerland or the usa it's getting carried in one of these um transport systems these transport systems can be uh, these transport systems can be uh, mostly in airplane right and just to carry that food item you're burning so much fossil fuel you're burning so much diesel or jet fuel to just get food from one part of the world to the other also it's not just one country to the other but also between states uh, so ideally if you're living in a certain city or a you should you should then be able to focus on getting food from that area uh, get food from that area make also make sure it's fresh and seasonal because if it's not fresh and seasonal it's probably sitting in a cold storage somewhere and the cold storage for a cold storage to run you are then talking about uh, food items that have been run and kept cold uh, with with some fossil fuel technology right either through electricity or through other sources and that electricity is of course coming from fossil fuel so you're automatically looking at um, the food no it's not just healthy for you but it's also not uh, it's also creating a lot of uh, air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions and also food in an ecological way food that is grown in a certain area it is built for that season it is built for that area it is good for your body and your health so it is a good idea even doctors say that buy local buy fresh seasonal fruits and food Uh, don't look to buy f- from outside and of course implement of afforestation so we've cut down a lot of trees in the last 3 4 decades uh and it's now time for us to go back and start growing more trees start growing more forests because that is the need of the hour uh so this these are some things that i'm going to uh, again just quickly run through this the solutions that all of you can run one uh change your habits your eating habits move away from non vegetarian food to vegan or vegetarian food whatever you're eating make sure it's sustainable make sure it's organic it's local it's fresh and start growing more forests in areas where it's possible to grow forests of course you have to do that uh, in in collaboration with multiple uh, uh, agencies especially when you're growing forests 
the other very big form of uh, pollution are industries and factories this is something which is very common there are two things which are very common you can immediately relate to uh, factories and vehicles so there there are pipes there are tail pipes in vehicles there are chimneys in factories and you can immediately see the smoke and you know from these places you're able to get pollution but from some the other pollution like uh, using electricity or appliances you can't see that because uh, the electric the energy that is producing is is coming from somewhere else or in the case of agriculture again the agriculture practice is happening somewhere else but we're consuming here and also we are not able to see uh, how the agriculture practice is creating pollution from our naked eyes uh, also with waste we hardly cross these landfills and many of the waste that is we creating we can't see the problem but in the case of factories and industries you can very clearly see through the chimneys uh, that uh, pollution is going out and even not all the pollution that you can see is the pollution there's a lot of pollution that you cannot see it's only a very minuscule uh, uh, part of the chimney uh, that you can see the pollution uh, so the first thing that you should do is at the chimney itself apply filters so there are government mandates to apply filters in the chimneys and the pollutants get locked into these filters and then you can treat them and make sure they don't go into the atmosphere they don't go into the air um, and you're able to control these um, these pollutants uh, the other of course is using cleaner fuels so say i am burning biomass or i am burning petrol or i am burning diesel for running these industries or so if i change my fuel to a more uh to a fuel which is more cleaner um uh, and there are a lot of types of clean fuel that are coming up there are biomass pellets uh which are low consumption they consume or they send out low uh, material so there are a lot of new cleaner fuels that are coming out or also adopting new technology uh that are uh, that are emitting less fuels so there are a lot of good solutions out there to make sure that you are able to uh, change your fuel and change your technology and make sure these industries are are following prescribed government standards some of the government standards are very strict about pollution but a lot of industries find a way out so they don't have to follow these solutions uh, another thing that we do is we fire a lot of firecrackers and this is something and especially we do that in the winter months we do it in diwali of course we do it in durga puja we do it in chhat puja we do it in uh, around new years christmas and this is something we should avoid because winters is a time where air pollution is the worst because uh, the the fog that creates the fog that gets created in the winter season it envelops our cities and when we pollute them the pollution the pollution does not find an escape route and it stays with the fog and what is called the smog so seeing no to firecrackers is very very important and especially we use a lot of the firecrackers in the winter months uh and lastly of course is don't use products with chemicals these chemicals so we use a lot of we don't even know products that have chemicals our hand washes our uh, the painting the paint that we do um in on our walls a lot of them have a very very harmful hazardous chemicals so please choose products wisely which do not have these harmful chemicals because these chemicals when they mix with at atmosphere air they become they pollute uh, uh they pollute so uh, this is going to be very very important now the next session right sorry about that uh, so indoor air pollution is a big problem especially in villages in outdoor communities uh that's a, that's a really big problem so we have to stop saying no to burning wood biomass leaves for cooking or for heating or just to get rid of waste we have to stop doing that uh if it's happening in your house if it's happening in your garden the mali is coming mali bhaiya is coming mm -hmm. or it's in your school or college the mali bhaiya is coming putting all the leaves together and putting fire mm -hmm. uh or collecting even some other rubbish like plastic etc paper paper putting fire so you don't have to worry about waste that is a strict no no we can't do that and maybe in your close to your house or close to your school there is a canteen or there is a chai wala who's using coal uh wood or biomass to burn and cook food or chai 
you have to stop that from happening because that is directly going into the air that we are breathing uh there are good household practices that we can maintain we can use chemical free products to keep the house clean we should clean our house we should clean because there's there's dust that accumulates in the house and that dust is very harmful when it goes into our body so keep the house clean with using the right cleaning material all of that is important if there is someone who smokes in your house they, that must not happen at all agarbatti smoking these are things that emit smoke and uh, that directly goes into our lungs uh, the other thing is setting up of indoor air plants or air cleaners air purifiers a lot of air purifiers that have come out especially in winter months these become very very important when the air pollution is crossing dangerous levels in fact emergency levels so these are things we must keep in mind uh, next up is uh, vehicular emission this is again something that you can immediately see uh and this is by far becoming the largest contributor of air pollution in cities across india across the world and this is something which is very concerning uh there are just in in kolkata itself where we've done some studies in the last 7 8 years the cars that are on the roads have grown up by 3 times the motorcycles on the road are growing up by 7 times and these are just very very scary numbers they're not just congesting our cities they're just not putting more and more traffic in the city but it's also creating a lot of pollution uh, and this is where we have to encourage people to cycle walk use public transport like buses uh, metros so so with cycle and walk there is absolutely no emission there is no contribution to air pollution so that's a great way to start but you can't probably not everyone can cycle and walk not everyone can do cycle and walk to every location so choose public transport um and that is where you're sharing the same vehicle with a lot of people or uh, 20 30 100 in the case of metro hundreds of people uh so when you choose that you're sharing that pollution load with a lot of people uh the other important thing is electric vehicles electric vehicles which are using uh and there is no emissions of electric vehicle you know this and what is going to be even greater with electric vehicles if we can have the electricity that is charging these electric vehicles coming from solar or coming from wind uh so these are becoming almost as close to zero emissions as possible uh but nothing of course is zero emissions but uh, you're able to get as close to it as possible the other thing is uh, use trains over airplanes airplanes are a very very polluting source uh, and that is where you choose uh, trains over planes uh, we we are people who lead lives where we need to travel and it's really really important we choose the right method of travel the right type of travel that's an extreme important thing to do uh, i'm going to pause here i'm going to show the next slide of what are things that you can do uh the next two slides actually uh i'm going to pause here and let you think about what are things that you can th- do in your day to day life and put it in your chat box i'm going to pause here so that you i want you to think about it the the sad part about not being in a physical face to face sort of a webinar or a workshop is that we cannot have a very we can't keep it very interactive but the best interaction that we can do is on the chat box I want you to think about what are solutions that you like that you can apply in your day to day lives. So there are a lot of solutions you can do. You can set up vertical gardening in your houses, you can do forestry, you can plant trees, um uh, you can shift to renewable energy sources, you can use cycles, electric buses, public transport, um uh, you can use better waste management practices by composting, by recycling, by reducing, saying no to consumption, uh curbing road and industrial dust. Uh, a lot of the pollution actually comes from uh, the construction sector where a lot of dust is actually created while constructing a building uh, or while creating road or industries uh, so it's very important that we are able to manage and control industries the construction sector and curb the air pollution coming out of that so i'm going to show the next presentation the next slide i, I would like you to uh, i don't think you you're able to see it let me see if i can present and you should be able to see it i hope you should you should be able to um it should be loading give me a second um 
you should yes you can see it great so just think about what are things so this is a nice picture of your house what you can do in your house in your city things that are around uh, i would so even beyond what you see here what are things i would encourage you to think about what are things that you can do in your day to day lives i'm going to give you 1 minute 2 minutes to think about that and put it in the chat box i will come and read out your comments and i will then go into some more details about vehicular pollution so take a couple of minutes and put down go away and click in the chat box all right great so um great so what i have seen is encourage everyone to put your thoughts comments we've already said that i hope everyone's been able to think about what are sessions that you can do what are actions you can do please feel free to put it in the chat box uh, write about what you can do so use this time to put uh, what are things that you can do in the chat box um while you're doing that what i'm going to start uh, doing is uh, i'm going to start uh, i'm going to move into the next slides this is an extremely important slide uh, so while we take action in our day to day lives it's very very important that we are also taking action with our community taking action as a group in our schools in our padas in our localities in our colonies uh, in our cities in our uh, wards in our uh, we start coming together as a group because while the first thing we have to do is start changing our own lifestyle start changing our own consumption habits start changing our own practices but use that power use that knowledge to start uh, to start encouraging others to also start changing those habits so and there is a very very large global movement that is starting around climate change around air pollution that are encouraging people to change their habits but not just people but also government officers governments uh, politicians uh, bureaucrats uh, experts to take notice and start changing at a city level to start changing at a at a global level uh, because it is it is time that we do that if we don't then we are looking at a uh, future which is very very dangerous and very bleak you would have some of you would have read the newspaper that it's scientists have said this is climate code red in the next 20 years we could be talking about 1.5 degrees change in the climate change which is very very dangerous and i was i was telling earlier that it's not just about the 1.5 degree change in climate change but it's the immediately the sources of climate change are the same sources of air pollution so air pollution is going to impact us even before climate change is going to impact us so this is an extremely important time that we uh, come together as a community and start making this difference uh, besides this what is really important is that we start monitoring air quality Uh, there are air quality stations put up by the government we can ourselves buy some air quality monitors we are setting up air quality monitors in schools um, and whenever there is a poor air quality day it's very important we wear n95 mask because the air that we are breathing is very dangerous we know n95 masks now because of thanks to covid uh, so it's very important that we practice that even after air quality uh, is 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 done Uh, next is uh, avoid air outdoor activities we should not do outdoor activities when um, air quality is poor uh, the other thing is very important is start reaching out to your local councilor municipality uh, to implement solutions for clean air uh, it's extremely important we do that because while we change our own habits we need our city our state our country the whole world to start changing and uh, you need to start raising the voice for that and it's not just your voice you are adding to lakhs and lakhs of voices of children youth parents young professionals so it's very important to do that the other way to do it is there are ways in which you can complain polluters there is an app called the samir app it's by the government so you can go to your store uh, apple store or uh, android store or play store and you can start you can find the samir app download it and every time you see a polluter you take you can take a photo and let people uh, and let the government know that there is something happening 
So I'm going to now briefly talk about what we are doing as a clean air network. As a clean air network, we are bringing in youth, children, uh, institutions like schools, colleges, doctors to come and start talking about clean air, uh, to spread awareness, but not just talking about clean air, but take up projects, uh, do forestation, do um, uh, waste segregation, promote cycling. So everything that we talked about. We start doing this as a network. We start sharing resources, sharing knowledge between each other. That's what we're trying to do. And when we start doing this, uh, and when people come together, start spreading the knowledge, we not just change our lifestyle, but we also change policy. We change government, the way they function and they, the way they work. Uh, so the youth have the, knowledge, have the force, uh, are the future of the country. And we, when we come together, children, youth, doctors, everyone coming together, especially young people and starting to change their lifestyle, encouraging others to change lifestyle, we can make a difference. And that's really important. Uh, so as a network, we conduct workshops, competitions, mobilize. And I would encourage all of you from your schools, colleges to start participating in all of this. Uh, the other thing which is very important is data has to be there. So that is where we start monitoring air in your cities, start spreading awareness of this knowledge through news, through social media, and all of you can start playing a role there. Now, what is important is doctors. Doctors know the challenges of air pollution and they're coming together and spreading this knowledge. They're coming and doing uh, uh, health checkups for various people. Uh, the other last important thing I'm going to talk about and we're very passionate about is promoting cycling. In Kolkata, very sadly, uh, cycle is almost banned across all of the main part of Kolkata. And cycle is the most economic, eco-friendly method of transporting. Uh, and it's not just in, um, it's not just in um, about cycling, but it's overall uh, moving to sustainable mobility. Uh, so it's very sad while across the world cyclists getting promoted there are more and more cycleways getting created hundreds of kilometers of cycleways creating uh, uh, in cities like berlin people are switching from cars to riding cycling uh, it's important that we have to start doing that start promoting cycling start promoting walking start promoting public transport in our cities not just in kolkata but all our cities uh, and so we would say that oh cycles are not safe how is how are uh, how our cycle is going to run on in our cities. But if there is enough cycles that come on the streets, uh, uh, we will be able to make our cities safer for cycles, for cyclists and for others also. Um, and it's a very important part for social inclusion because more and more people cannot afford buses, even buses tickets. Bus tickets have gone up from 10 rupees to 15 rupees to 20 rupees. And it's not possible for people who are marginalized communities to afford these. And that for them, cycling and walking is extremely important. Um, urban congestion, just imagine as more and more cars move into our cities, how are we going to just, I can imagine just 10 years, just uh, five years from now, uh, uh, just five years from now, uh, just five years from now, uh, there were 100 cars on one road. Now there are 300 cars on the same road. So it's not possible to. Uh, uh, so it's not possible to now move away uh, uh, from this. So great. So this is. Congestion is becoming a huge problem. So it will be great to have cyclists, uh, cycles there. And what is important is cycles actually have become the same speed as cars because of the congestion that is happening. Uh, in terms of safety, there are more people at risk because of cars than because of cycle. Cyclists are already, there are very, there are of course a lot of cyclists can be at risk, but we know from data that cycles are a small component of road deaths as compared to some of the others like pedestrians etc uh, we are going to now start moving into the uh, breakout room but before by while we are doing that i just want to repeat again vehicular emission is one of the biggest emissions is the biggest cause of emissions um, in in our cities so it's very important that we move to better uh, methods. My email address is here vj at switchon.org.in. Feel free to write me. 
write to me if you have questions we will be sharing uh, we will be sharing more information later we'll move into the breakout room in about 30 seconds um, i will encourage you to uh, put your thoughts about what you thought about this presentation and put it in the breakout room uh, so uh, apps, uh, i'm i'm already starting to see some very nice comments coming in uh, please also put it down in the breakout room uh, so and i hope you can all change your lifestyles and encourage others to change their lifestyles